So today I'm going to focus in on one of the most important pieces of mountain bike tech, your brakes. And I'm gonna hone in even further onto rotor size. And I'm going to do a bunch of tests to see if changing the rotor size will even change your braking performance, your braking power, and even the heat dissipation within your system. So stick with me and see if it makes a difference at all. that term bigger is better and I certainly hear that term used when we start talking about rotor size. Now on the Enduro World Cup scene we've seen a lot of riders moving up to 220 mils which was usually reserved for downhill and I want to know are people sizing up because they want more braking power or because of the suspected heat dissipation properties so if you can dissipate heat then you get a more consistent braking performance down a trail. So I'm just going to isolate three discs. I've got a 180, a 200 and a 220 millimeter disc that I'm going to be running front and rear so that it's consistent. And I've got three tests in mind. I've got a tarmac braking distance test. I'm going to move that braking distance over to a gravel path as well to see if it makes any difference on loose terrain. And then I'm going to run all three on an actual trail so we can test it in the real life and I've got a heat gun so we can see if there's been any heat differences between the two rotors so uh, well I guess we better get started so test one is a good old-fashioned stopping distance test I'm gonna start up at that corner blast it down this tarmac and then I'm gonna apply my brakes as soon as I hit this line that I've made here. And then we're gonna measure the stopping distance or where I come to a stop to. So uh, let's give the 180s a go to start with. <laughs> the magic of editing. <laughs> oh, don't move. This is very important. Oh, that's the least chalkiest rock ever. There we go. 180. Let's put a big eight. Done. Now test number two is effectively a stopping distance test as well, but it will be on gravel because this is nice and consistent and it's also very loose. So it's quite possible that a bigger rotor might be so powerful that I'll end up skidding, but um, well, there's only one way to find out. So I'll just use this stick to mark out my line and this is where I'm gonna start braking and then we'll see what our braking distance is with the different rotor sizes. There we go. Got my trusty stick here as well. Ta-da! So that's the braking distance test done. Now it's time to move over to the trail to try these 180 discs out in the real world. And then we're gonna use an infrared thermometer to see how much heat builds up in them. Let's go. So here in Finale Ligure, our trail test of choice is gonna be Little Champery, as this is quite steep, it's got a lot of switchbacks in it, so that means there's gonna be a lot of braking. Um, and well, let's see what the 180s do. Oh, it's choppy. Yeah.
So just to conclude, the 180 versus Little Champery test. Now in the front, that was about 18 degrees and that shot up to about 28 degrees. And then in the rear, that was about 17 degrees to start with. And that shot up to about 48 degrees in places. And the rest of the places, the coolest places I could find was about 33 degrees. So it almost doubled in temperature. Uh, so be interested to see if the other discs heat up that much or maybe not as much. Only one way to find out. Let's move on to the 200 mil rotors. Right, we ran out of light yesterday, so it's a fresh day, fresh jersey, and fresh rotors on the bike. So I've got a 200 front and rear. Moving up from the 180 to a 200 is actually an 11.4% increase in surface area. And being as they're bigger, it means a bigger leverage ratio, so they should be more powerful, they should be better stopping power. Uh, if you imagine having a longer spanner undoing a, a nut or a bolt, for example, then longer has more leverage and it's easier to pull. Uh, I guess there's only one way to find out whether we notice that or not, and that means test time. Right, it's time for the tarmac braking test on the 200s. Right, this is the 200 mark here. And that's a 180 way over there. <laughs> okay, we're back at the gravel road. So let's do a stop test on loose terrain on the 200s. Oh, that was good. <laughs> okay, so there's where my 200 stop. It's probably a good meter or, well, meter and a half, maybe two meters away from the 180s. So that is great stopping power, great stopping distance for safety, but this isn't a gravel bike. This is a mountain bike. So is that gonna to be too much power for the trail? I guess we'll have to find out. 200 mil rotors on Little Champery. Let's go. Thermometer out quick. 42, 39, 42 on the back and on the front. 22. Blimey, barely done anything. If I move it around, 23, 18. Okay, I could definitely tell that my stopping distance had come in a bit on the trail. So I was pulling the brakes into a corner to slow up for it and get the right speed. And I was actually slowing down too soon. Uh, so I realized that I could break a lot later into corners. So as I got used to it, I was actually coming into corners a lot quicker and breaking later, which is kind of my style anyway. So I do think that I might've been going faster. And also I just started to feel a lot safer on the 200s because on the rock gardens that needed a bit of dragging down. There was a lot more control. They're a bit bitier. And also just knowing that I could stop sooner if there was an obstacle or a corner unexpectedly coming my way uh, just was great peace of mind. Um, but now it's time for a bit of a pit stop to change these 200s over to a 220. And I'm intrigued as to whether these will be too much power, uh, especially for a sub 60 kilo rider like myself. Well, let's have a go. Moving from 200 millimeters to 220 millimeters gives me a 10.3% increase in surface area. But will it give me a further increase in performance? Let's find out. And we're back on the line on the tarmac to do our final distance test on the 220 mil rotors. Let's get going. <laughs> Wow, I've actually gone past the 200 rotor line, which is odd. So I redone this test twice, uh, and I even changed my air pressure a little bit and did the test a third time, because I thought something must be wrong. 
but the 220 rotors definitely stop between the 180 and the 200. So it's possible that they're so powerful, maybe so grabby, that they grab instantaneously and just lock up both my wheels and then the stopping power is then relying on how good my tires grip or uh, something like that so it means that I'm just skidding basically it's almost like they're too powerful um, but maybe that's a tarmac thing maybe they're better on the dirt let's give that a go hmm. not as good again <laughs> <laughs> there's the 200 line by my back wheel and there's my front wheel over there way over there so weird again that the 220s were well they don't break as soon as the 200s the 200s were best in a stopping test regardless of whether it was tarmac or loose terrain um, but is it realistic to slam on the brakes like that and just come to a grinding halt um, on the trail? Probably not. So let's go and see if the 220s are, well, not as good on the trail side of things. Right, they're quite grabby, so I'm having to adjust my sort of finger pull if you like so I'm not pulling too hard Okay, the moment of truth, are they hotter? 50, 55, 58. Wow, 54, 46, they're hotter. Ah, okay, on the front, 24, 22, 24, 21. That's incredible, they are, Massively hotter, 36, 34, 36. Oh, they've gone down really quickly. So they've cooled down to 25 in places, but still 40 degrees. Well, that concludes the final test, the trail test out in the 220s. And I gotta say, at first, they felt a little bit too grabby for me. Um, and so it was kind of throwing my weight forward a bit, but I readjusted really quickly to the point where I was just kind of feathering them really gently. And in fact, I felt like I could get the same amount of power in them by a light touch as to what I would get in my 200s, say. Um, so I guess that kind of explains why a lot of enduro riders have been switching to 220s. 20s just to sort of remove that fatigue and that arm pump and I do think that is a legit reason to go for them um, but were they quicker um, <laughs> well first of all I put the heat gun on them and actually they were a lot hotter than the 200s um, but they did dissipate the heat really quickly as soon as I started testing them I moved from the front to the back and then went back to the back and it lost about 10 degrees in the time that I was mucking around with the front so maybe they do cool down really quickly um, but let's see if they were actually quicker. We're gonna to have to head back to the hotel and do some timing and see which one was better on the trail. Okay, let's start with the raw numbers first. And I'm gonna go with the trail test here. Now, when we started, the discs had an ambient temperature of about 17 to 18 degrees. And the 180s heated up to over 50 degrees by the end of the trail and the 200s uh, were more like under 50 degrees, around about the 40 region, although they were quite variable. Um, the problem with the 220 test is that at the end of the run, I got stuck behind a lot of traffic, uh, a lot of riders that were slower than me, and I had to drag brake. So I think that's why at the end of that trail, we had temperatures of over 50 degrees, so a little bit inconclusive. However, what was interesting was when I tested the front and then came back to the rear disc, it had actually cooled down by about 10 degrees. So it is possible that they do actually cool down a lot quicker than the smaller disc sizes. 
Okay, let's talk about times. So as I said, I got caught in traffic. So it was a three minute track, but what I decided to do is edit down the times to a point before the traffic. Uh, so these do seem like short numbers, but on the 220, I got 147 before I got caught in traffic. On the 200s, I got 146. And on the 180s, I got 151. So the 180s were noticeably slower, only about five seconds or so. Um, but the 200s and the 220s were negligibly close, I would say. Um, I don't think the time is where it's really important though. I think moving from 180 to 200 did exactly what you would expect. I had better control, better braking performance. They didn't heat up so much, so the braking was consistent. But when I moved to the 220s, what I found was I didn't have more power as such well i did but i readjusted um, my brain quite quickly to just have a really light feel on the brakes and i got the same amount of power as my 200s but with a gentle touch and this was just a nicer feel um, i can see why the pros in the enduro world cup circuit are running 220s or 220s up front for that lighter feel. And we hear them say that they're not moving to bigger sizes for the bigger power. They're moving to that so that they can reduce fatigue and also reduce arm pump over long days and long tracks. And that seemed to be consistent with my tests. And let's talk about that stopping distance test as well, because moving from the 180s to the 200s did exactly what we expected. The stopping distance came in, so it did conclude that we had a better braking power. However, the 220 uh, seemed to be worse than the 200s, um, which was really unusual results. Now, I did say that an emergency stop is probably not a great test for trail. It's not realistic as to what we're doing out on the trail but perhaps the 220s were so powerful that we just skidded, especially me being a light rider on a hardtail, perhaps a heavier rider on a full suspension would dig in better and stop better. Uh, but that's kind of a little inconclusive, I think, personally. Um, but I do think it's really interesting that I got all these different results just by changing rotor size. I mean, I'm on the basic Shimano Dior two piston brakes, and I effectively uh, had an incredible increase in power and performance just by changing my rotors. And I do think if you have 180s and you think you need uh, better performance, then moving up to 200 would be an incredible increase um, or upgrade as opposed to going out and buying some new brakes, I think. I've always said that increase in the performance of your rotors would be better value for money than changing your brakes altogether. And I've definitely proved that to myself today. I also think that if I were to redo this test, what I would do is perhaps a drag braking test down a slope at a controlled speed for a long period of time, because I think that 220 trail test did reveal that drag braking is what really heats up the discs, not so much using them a lot on an actual trail. Um, so I think I would redo that and it would be interesting to see at the end of a drag brake test, how quickly it would be for those discs to cool down. Um, I would also go for a longer trail test uh, where although I was on a three minute plus trail, which I think is very realistic for most people to be riding three minute trails. It is for me on a regular basis on my home turf. Um, but if we were to do a five minute plus test, I think we were more likely to see that um, heat starting to affect the performance of the brakes, as we see in the Enduro World Cup, where they're really long descents and those sorts of things do come into play. So um, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. If I were to do this as a retest, as a part two, what do you think about the drag braking? What do you think about a longer uh, trail test? And is there something I haven't thought about in this test? Um, but for now, I think I'm concluding that bigger is pretty much better, but there is a sweet spot. And I think the 200s are the sweet spot, unless you're doing downhill or really long alpine descents. But for now, that's all I've got time for. Thanks for watching. Thank you.